So I am doing a little water change because we had a lot of rain and I got my tanks that are full. So when I can, why not? So you see, I have this pipe and I'm running some water away. Just with gravity, right? So I can take this opportunity to check the, the pond, you see, the, the level is quite low. I'm not gonna go any lower than that. I'm not gonna do a full water change at all. But I just take this opportunity to renew a bit of water. When you have water on hand that you don't use because we had a lot of rain, why not? You know, it's always good. Um, of course, if you have low nutrient, if your system is, is, uh, is young, you don't do that. But uh, if you have a lot of fish, you can definitely take this opportunity. It's a good thing. And right now I'm gonna um, take this uh, jar and I'm gonna fill it with water. Um, I would like to see what kind of spaces we can see in this pond. Uh, I'm talking about uh, spaces uh, of, you know, very small spaces of plankton, phytoplankton, zooplankton, insect, crustacean, whatever it is. Uh, I'm gonna go around and try to get some water here the idea is not to get some water just from the surface but to go a bit dig a bit and uh, disturb a bit uh, the bottom to have whatever spaces uh, in suspension into the water so i may take a few the water from a few places i will see so here for instance you see we got these spots where not much is happening Take it away. Having algae inside is interesting as well. A lot of spaces are living on the algae, so I collect them as much as I can. It's not a problem that the jar is dirty, because with time it will settle down. So I'm even gonna take some of these rocks here. You see now, I'm really kind of into the mud that could be on the bottom of the pond. This is good, as you can see, it's very dirty, but that's exactly what we want. Now I will, I will leave it settled down. Of course, we don't see much activity here. The water is very dirty. I'm going to let it settle down, put in inside the window to have a bit of light for the algae to continue to, to do their photosynthesis a bit. So it will provide a bit of oxygen inside. And uh, I will stop this water change now. I will add more water in the, in the system. And we can already see some worms. The water is still unclear, but with time the particles will settle down as it will become clearer. We can see also some algae. And really the few spaces that we can see with our eyes are worms. And maybe a, a little snail. I spotted a snail, so I will put a kind of very small microscope that I have on the jar. And now we can see the snail. I really like to see them from this perspective. 
because even if this nail is extremely small, um, here we can really see the details, we can see the kind of antennas with the eyes. It makes things very interesting, we can see the digestive system through, I mean, not with details, but we can guess it, it's a bit darker. And you know, those animals, they basically go through the glass and they try to eat whatever algae can be present. I'm talking about the glass of the jar here, but it could be on the bottom of the, of the pond, you know, they eat the algae basically. Or they can eat more than an algae actually, they are opportunists, so they will eat anything. Here we have some species of nematodes. Obviously, I'm completely unable to tell you the exact species. But they are very interesting to see, you know, see them moving around. Seeing their, their habitats, you know, I found them very much on the bottom of the jar. Um, and they don't swim, those ones, you know, they, they just uh, scroll on the, on, the, on the jar. They may be eating uh, the organic matter. They may break down the organic matter, or they may, they may be just uh, eating algae as well. It's very hard to tell. Here is an, another footage. We can see nematodes again. And uh, yeah, that's the first time I see uh, those creatures in Australia because I was used to see those things in Europe, but I never took the time to really observe it closely in Australia. Uh, but the shapes I found, the type of living aquatic creatures are very similar to what I could observe in Europe. Here's another I mean, the same species seems to be the same species all the time of nematodes. They are a bit whitish, transparent. Now we have what we call a blood worm. And um, those type of worms, they definitely feed on organic matters that are on the bottom of the pond. They are not bad and uh, you see they bury themselves. They are often used to go fishing. You see this one is doing a U-turn, that's quite interesting. Those creatures, you know, when you observe them very closely, they become monsters, <laughs> little water monsters. And this one you see is moving, I don't know if it's too brief or if it's to basically dig his hole. Here we got some other nematodes. I'm gonna accelerate the footage. So now the speed is uh, way higher than normal. But you can see, you know, I just fixed uh, the camera to the jar and you can see them moving around. Now, an interesting species. This one looks like a very familiar Daphnia for those of you who know a bit about uh, those type of little crustacean. But this one, you know, Daphnia normally is a swim. And this one is not swimming much. It's more like a benthic species, a species that is used to eat food on the bottom. So I'm not really sure if it's a sea shrimp or a type of Daphnia or something completely different. Uh, anyway, it's interesting to see that, that the crustaceans that I can see the most from the samples I took. And now what we see is what we called an hydra. And Hydra are very, very <laughs> interesting animals. At least I find them interesting. Uh, they have long tentacles. They are related to the anemona. And you see here is feeding on a little crustacean that one, one of the, the one we just saw before. So not sure about the species that he's eating now. But uh, yeah, Hydra are very interesting. They are everywhere on all fresh water. Uh, they are very uh, common species and they can eat heaps of crustaceans. They really eat a lot. 
Um, so they are close to anemona again, and uh, tentacles are everywhere. And those tentacles, they, they, they kind of stick. So if any crustacean, any prey is moving around, the tentacle is gonna, is gonna catch it, and then is moving uh, the prey to his mouth, where he's basically either killing the crustacean or sucking the juice out of it. I'm not really sure. Um, if there are some experts uh, among you, I would love if you could leave a comment below the video because you know uh, my knowledge in uh, in this area is limited. Um, I know a few basic spaces, but if you recognize some spaces for sure, I would be very happy to uh, learn about uh, your knowledge. So yeah, feel free to share in the comment section below the video. Now. I left uh, the Hydra footage a bit longer. Here we can see quite another one. It's quite interesting to see. And you see on the left there is a nematode again. So the nematode is moving along the glass of the jar. And the Hydra is fixed on the jar as well. So they are interesting um, animals. And uh, yeah, the, you know, when you look at just a little sample of water from the hydro, uh, from the aquaponics system, you can see a lot of spaces already. So it tells you a bit about the type of biodiversity we are dealing with when we manage an aquaponics system. It's not just the fish and the plants; it's way, way more. Here you can see the number of crustaceans that he he caught. It's a lot. A lot of food for him. It never stops. So, yeah, if you have an aquaponic system, you can do the same. You can get a bit of water in a jar, and even with your eyes, you will see. You will be able to to identify a few spaces. Of course, the more natural um, the aquaponic system is, and the better. So here, it's from the holistic aquaponics. So it really recreates a whole ecosystem with different uh, biotopes, uh, which allow me to find a lot of interesting spaces. And I will continue in different areas of the aquaponic system if you like. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section if this is something you are interested in, if this is something you would like to see more and to learn more about. I'm very happy to make more videos of this type because myself, I, I really enjoy discovering new spaces. If you haven't done it yet, I recommend you to join the Aquaponics Revolution movement. There is a link into the description of this video. Once you join the movement, you will have access to some critical aquaponics information. I'm going to help you to understand the limits of aquaponics, the different ratio to respect, and how aquaponics works, the different cycles that are happening in the aquaponics system. You will also receive some updates on what I am doing here, the different experiments. So I hope to see you on the other side. And if not, I see you in the next video.